and welcome to the block unlocked. Well, our four neighbours have spent their first massive week at the block. And the pressure of having to decide what to do with their week one room has all our teams at breaking point. You're going to trash your design a real estate agent. Don't start messing with my head, please. No, I'm not. Please. Why not just get rid of this whole wall? Because you can't structure it. I know that, so let's keep it all. Plus, the judges compare everyone's chances in the competition. I don't think playing it safe is going to win the block. Here comes another one. These are the broken down Victorian terraces where our teams will spend the next 10 weeks renovating. Before our contestants could move in, our first priority was ensuring their safety. So we undertook detailed building inspections and removed all the traces of asbestos. Asbestos is an absolute killer and if you're thinking of renovating, make sure you get your place checked out by professionals. If you do find something, make sure those professionals remove it. With the block given a big tick for safety, there was still 150 years of rubble and countless coats of paint that would have to be removed before they could begin to create their masterpiece. And someone who knows all about the history of the block is Scotty. Around the 1860s to 1880s when these houses were built, Melbourne was a city of opulence. It was called Marvellous Melbourne and had the most immigrants from around the world coming to Melbourne. And that, of course, was because of the gold. People had money, the whole city had money. The basic structure, the bones of the buildings, absolutely outstanding. And we have stripped these four block homes back to those basic bones. Our contestants are gonna build these homes, they're gonna last another 150 years, and maybe come auction day, there's a good old fashioned gold rush happening. <laughs> back at the block 2012, it's time to welcome the tenants to their new home. Welcome to the block. Brad and Lara chose the biggest of all four houses, house number three. Oh, my God. God, there's no back of the house. There's no back of the house. Boyfriend and girlfriend, Dan and Danny, chose house number four. <laughs> oh, my God. Then it was the brothers, Mike and Andrew. Definitely yellow, lucky two. Yellow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's one of the most decrepit houses I've ever walked into. Blue will be great. The last team to get the key to their new home was the newlyweds, Dale and Sophie. Oh, this oh my goodness. A oh room. My goodness. I honestly didn't think it would be this bad. Everyone was daunted by the mammoth task before them, but what was even more shocking was their shared bathroom facilities. Look out. What do we have here? <laughs> oh, no. And I kid you not, I have seen better setups in the local footy club than what's down there. But spirits were lifted when they found the Might Attend shop in the backyard. Honestly, from how bad the house was, and then they opened those doors and it was like, oh, yes. We got our own hardware. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you love it? I love it. I said before, if we could put a plasma in a lounge out there, I wouldn't leave. With the storm clouds rolling in, everyone was eager to make a start. At least we've got one room clean. Ish. Clean ish. At the block, it's all about safety. And when working on a construction site like this, our teams are required to undergo safety training. So for our novice renovators, Sophie, Lara and Mike, who had never been inducted to a work site, it was over to the Master Builders Association to get up to speed. The course is called the Construction Induction Training Course. Formerly known as the red card, now known as the white card. And this course is designed for people who are taking on projects so that they can complete their projects with no injuries. Dale already has his white card. Um, it's just going to be really great for me to have it and Lara and Michael so that we can all just be working safely on the construction site for the block and in the future we've got it forever. It's very important and I think a lot of people need to understand this, that occupational health and safety is not just for the construction industry, it's for everyone. It was actually really valuable. 
A few key things that I learned today is that you've got to test and tag all your power cord. The noise, the, the different tools. There was a certain limit that your, your hearing could take a day. Hey, I feel much more qualified to start renovating on the block. With their white cards now in hand, confidence was growing. So next was a quick lesson on how to use power tools for the uninitiated. What we're going to go over quickly is nail guns and the safe use of an operation of them. Nail guns can be a very dangerous tool in the wrong hands. In fact, people have been killed by them overseas. Okay. Always point the gun away from you when you're plugging it in because it can fire on its own. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's ready to go. Push the safety down, pull the trigger. That's it. Oh, that's Go again if you want. I feel like a man. I feel like a man today. Fired that nail gun. <laughs> that was pretty cool, that thing. <laughs> Danny and I got in to have a go, but poor little Soph. She didn't want to have a bar of it? Nah, she stood there and watched, but. I meant to... Hand on the top? Yep. And then pull the trigger. Oh, shit. So at least I can maybe help Brad a bit more, because I'm feeling a little bit useless. It... Coming up after the break, the honeymoon is over. I just want you yes, to agree don't. with me being right. I don't. Welcome back to The Block Unlocked. The one thing everybody knows about The Block is that it's always full of surprises. And Scotty had one huge surprise involving the master plans. Hey, come on down. Here's trouble. Our teams were told that this year there would be not one, not two, but three storeys to renovate. This had just become the biggest block yet. And these plans had now changed everything for that front room. Everyone's brains was ticking over on what we're going to do with this first room. OK, see ya. But for one team, it was more like a ticking time bomb. Over at house number one, our rookie renovators, Sophie and Dale, were already arguing about what kind of room they wanted to you do. You need a fourth bedroom. Do you want me to say? I don't know what you want me to say. I just want you yes, to agree room. with me being right. I don't. Sophie wanted a bedroom. Dale wanted a formal dining room. Can't you imagine? That, of course I can imagine. That all this just just flows through from room to room. And... You just repeat yourself. I get it. Well, I can't say anymore because it's just what I think. It's pretty much Dale's way, and that's it which I have always known, but I suppose in this situation where there's so many decisions, I kind of expected that we'd be able to split them because there's so many, but it uh, doesn't seem that way. But where the door goes in the dining room is Sophie's call. You can um, take the whole door frame out and the plasterwork and just run it so it'll look like, a, look like a big, decent square. Well, you got to open there, open there. Why not just get rid of this whole wall? Because you can't structure. I know that, so let's keep a door. What's what's the purpose of it, though? Purpose is we're keeping the door. Nice try, Dale. Progress score, one all. After getting permission from the block architect, Dale got ready to cut a new dining room door. It's man's work, this. So I better go see if I can find one. By the week's end, the dining room and door had been decided. Sophie and Dale were determined to stamp the room with their own eclectic style. I love your choice of chairs too for your dining room. Yeah, they're uh, a bit mixed matched. <laughs> but they're not actually going in the room, are they? They are, yeah, they, they are. They are, yeah. I was joking. No, but they are. I'm concerned about the chairs. Obviously, if you're encouraging long dinner parties, you have a long meal, a good chat, are you going to be comfy sitting in those chairs? I think they're one of the really great features in our room. We'll wait and see what the judges think, I suppose. It was Sophie and Dale's eclectic style that had won them the spot on the block. So, expectations are already high. Dale and Sophie took a big risk and it paid off big time. So, I'm going to be very interested to see how they actually translate that into designing and decorating an entire house. And I love a room to have something, not the whole room, but something that's unexpected. So that really excites me to see what they can actually do. I get the impression that they have a sense of fun, a sense of quirkiness, um, and I think it could be a really interesting ride for them. Next door at house number two, 
Labourer Mike had come up with a secret plan that both he and Andrew thought would blitz the competition. You could have one of those beds that go back up in a, a, cut, a storage cupboard across here. If you made it a study. Yeah, a study, study slash guest, guest room. room. I like that idea. And just when they thought things couldn't get any better, the brothers struck gold at the hearth of their room, the fireplace. Yeah. Oh, oh, Let's go. Oh, wait, wait, what's this? To father, from his loving Lou Stewart, wishing him a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, 1896. Do you reckon that was him? Look at that. I might be uh, keeping this one. What? The old Victoria two pence stand. <gasps> <laughs> As the days crept closer Whoa. to room reveal, all the neighbours were keeping a close eye on the competition. We've actually got a fold-out bed in the joinery unit, so that's top secret if you didn't already know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no secret weapon would remain a secret for long. Uh, I've just got a bit of a gut feeling that I reckon they might be doing a tilt-away bed. <laughs> it's I not mean, very secret. Agent I, could there, be, is it? I could be wrong. The boys were mixing two different styles, heritage with modern. Could this be just what the judges are hoping to see come room reveal day? I think it looks as if Andrew and Mike have got good taste, and I'm going to be watching them very closely to see how they develop over the coming weeks. They've really, once again, set a certain standard because that's a really quite popular style of designing and decorating at the moment, and I hope they add on to that and don't just stick with that level. Welcome back to The Block Unlocked. After seeing Scotty's master plans for The Block, Minor Brad and his girlfriend Lara threw all their previous ideas and designs straight out the window. We are pretty torn over what we're going to do. We don't know whether to do have a fourth bedroom. We could do a pretty formal dining room in there because it's going to link into the kitchen if we want. Wanting to be sure of their decision, the couple sat down with a local real estate agent. So how can we help? Oh, we're just after a bit of expert advice. We're just undecided whether we want to make the front room a bedroom with study or there's an opportunity to go through one of the walls and make it into a dining. I would say that the front room should be a sitting room, but also have the flexibility for a study home office area. Yes, after we spoke to the agent, um, I've come out feeling rather ill because all my plans have now gone out the window. Again. Hearing of Brad and Lara's plans for a sitting room, site foreman Keith offered his own building advice. You're going to trash your design, a real estate agent. Don't start messing with my head, No, I'm head, not. I'm, I'm, I'd be just, no, I'm serious. I, I'd be really thinking about that. You, you're putting your whole design based on comments from a real estate agent. I'd be wary. I'd be really wary. I think the real estate guy kind of knows what he's talking about. So, I don't know, I'm still in two minds, but I've really got to make a decision. Anyway, up to you. But, yeah, run with what you think, I reckon. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> with the choice of a sitting room decided, Brad and Lara were quick to get to work on their room. So here we've got our beautiful old fireplace. It's over 100 years old and Brad and I are going to try and restore it. And hopefully, when we get rid of all this, the coats and coats of paint on that, it's going to come up something really rare and some beautiful old tile that no one's ever seen before. And that's exactly what happened. So we um, got some paint stripper on it and we discovered this magnificent fireplace. Brad and Lara were confident with their modern style in their sitting room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until we arrive. There's three judges. Yes. All with varying opinions on how things are going to go and how the houses are going to turn out. Have you got something in here for all of them? We won't have a great deal in here. We've got like a white leather lounge. White leather lounge, denim blue chair. Yeah. Anyway, our job here today is just to throw <laughs> us a few spanners in the Just to make you works. feel completely Thank confident you. about how things are going. <laughs> Scott and Shelley have definitely worried me a little bit. Now I'm second guessing everything we've done. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. At the end of the day, it's really up to the judges. Look, I think the early signs are good. 
for Brad and Lara. I think there's an elegance there, and it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. I think going into the block series, they're going to have to be more courageous, take a few more risks, and have more of their personality and their design flair coming through, because I don't think playing it safe is going to win the block. I don't think I really know what they're capable of, so they could be a dark horse. At house number four, Chippy Dan and his girlfriend Danny had immediately fallen in love with their house. We love our place to bits, and even though we might have the smallest yard, there's other things about this place that trump everybody else's. And they had a clear design plan from the start. We're actually going to do a bedroom study. Beautiful. So but we want to focus on the element of study, because, I mean, it can be either a guest bedroom or a home office. All right, we'll just do some measurements yeah. and go from there. Thanks, boys. Fantastic. No after a flying start, Dan and Danny suddenly hit a series of hurdles. We had a bit of a stuff up. The termite guy didn't arrive till midday. You're supposed to be here at nine. So then our floors, of course, didn't get laid. Thanks a lot, Mr. Termite guy. You've done real well, haven't you? You've really stuffed our day up right here. <laughs> Jeez, we're starting off well. But nothing was going to stop this couple from finishing their room. Not even Keith. Because Keith didn't put down our floors, even though he assured us they would be down by the time we got home. Dan now has to lay our floors for the plasterers to come tomorrow. It's a flip of a coin at the moment whether the room will get finished in time. It will. Dan and Danny wanted their room to look very modern. But is this really what the judges are hoping to see come room reveal day? With what they did in a day, I'm going to be very excited to see what they do in a week. Dan and Danny have obviously got a good sense of colour, so I'm expecting to see some exciting things from them colour-wise over the coming weeks. The standard is quite high and it's almost like, oh, God, where are they going to go from here? But they have to. They have to grow. After the break, the judges give their top tips to the contestants. You've got to think about your target market. Week one on the block has been a huge learning curve. Never before have our teams had to renovate three-storey terraces. And while there's already been a few arguments... You've convinced yourself into it. ..and tantrums... You're joking me, Keith. ..these guys still believe they're living the dream. Got to get fans on board. Wait, really? <laughs> <laughs> This is a block. Apparently we didn't get to sleep. Well, cherry rock and E. <laughs> oh, have a bit of fun in your life, you sad sack. Look at my guns. I'm lifting rubble on the block. Solid. Adios, amigo. So, with judgment this Sunday night, what's the best advice our judges can give to the contestants as they face their first room reveal? I think they shouldn't try to double-guess the judges each week. I think they should sort of try and stick to their own aesthetic. Um, and they shouldn't be tempted to overstyle. There's that old rule that, um, I think it was, was it Coco Chanel said, always take one thing out? Absolutely. Well, the same thing applies to styling in an interior. I think the biggest thing is remember that these houses are to be sold and do up the rooms with some personality, but don't inject all of your own personality because in the end, it's not your house you're doing. You're actually doing it for other people to buy. Well, the block's all about getting the most money on auction day or the most money above the reserve price. So you've got to think about your target market. Who's going to buy this? Who's going to pay the most amount of money? And what are they looking for? So the countdown is on to the first room reveal. <laughs> 
With time running out and five grand up for grabs, the pressure is on. Quick, come on! What you're witnessing is the real Danny. Off then. And our new judge shows no mercy. Very bad scooting. This is really cheap and nasty. The winner is... Join us on Sunday night as we reveal the first week winners for the block.